Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Betty Davis and James Stewart in June Bride. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. We're both proud and happy here in the Lux Radio Theater this evening. Proud because this is the opening of the most promising season we've ever had. And happy because we can sincerely welcome you back as old friends. In honor of this special occasion, we present two stars whose names carry the enchantment of great theater, Betty Davis and James Stewart. And they star in a comedy that has delighted screen audiences all over the country. It's the Warner Brothers hit, June Bride. Of course, a title like June Bride calls up thoughts of orange blossoms and romance. But modern brides must be homemakers, too. Here's the first act of June Bride, starring James Stewart as Carrie Jackson and Betty Davis as Linda Gilbert. <laughs> In the elaborate office building of the Allied Magazine Syndicate, three entire floors are devoted to the highly successful Home Life magazine. At the head of this minor empire is Home Life's efficient editor, Miss Linda Gilman. May I come in, Madam Editor? Carrie, it's, a, it's you. You are back. Hello. Oh, well, a great, big, enthusiastic hello to you, too. What? How have you been, Linda? Reasonably well, considering I haven't had you around for the past three years. That long, huh? Yes, the last time I saw you, we had lunch at Marcel's. That was uh, August 12th, 1946. We were supposed to dine at Caesar's, only uh, you went to Berlin instead. I might have known you'd remember. Uh, by the way, our date is off, isn't it? When I didn't hear from you for three years, I leaped to that conclusion. You heal. Oh, no. Don't, don't be like that. Mm, all right, anyway. Anyway, you're not really a heel. You just give that impression. What do you want? Well, can't I stop in and say hello without being suspected? Well, you're being very charming, very reasonable, and very boyish. Unless you've changed, that means you're about to drink somebody's blood. Probably mine. <clears throat> Look, I've just been up to see the boss. He fired me. Really? And here I was thinking he couldn't read. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. Now, uh, anyhow, he hired me back again. He can't read. Uh, you know who my new editor is? No, who? You. Oh, no. He wouldn't do that. He's already done it. He signed me to the Home Life in America series. Oh, am I dead? No, no, this, this isn't very flattering, you know. After all, I'm still pretty handy with a typewriter. I'm gay. I'm lovable. I've got nice teeth. What else do you want? I'll be as tactful as possible, Carrie. I don't want you around. Grudge, nurser. No, nothing personal. You're a fine fellow, but I won't have you on my magazine. Why not? You're a foreign correspondent, Carrie. You're used to exciting, important stories. The most exciting thing that happens to the people we write about is a $5 raise for Pa. You'd be utterly bored. You'd start making fun of them. It would not work out. Well, at least couldn't we just talk about it? After all, I... I... Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to dinner. The date? No. Well, then have dinner with me. The one we missed three years ago. I'm glad I didn't wait. Uh, uh, well, uh, we can have dinner at Caesars. They don't know my credit's no good. Sounds frightfully expensive. Uh, Sherwin's then. Only about five bucks for the two of us. You can afford that much, can't you? Now, look, Carrie. Well, what, what, what are you suspicious about? I, we'll have dinner. I'll take you home. Early. It's a very busy day tomorrow. I'm going to Indiana. Oh, yes, Indiana. My first assignment, huh? You? Indiana? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Lovely time, Carrie. Lovely, lovely. It was lovely. Ah, lovely. Now, let me in. Have to get up early in the morning. Good night. Good night. I can only stay for a minute. You're so... This is, this is nice. Here we are, sort of picking things up just where we left off, you know? You're picking I, nothing I, up. I, Not I... one single bygone is going to be a bygone as far as I'm concerned. Stop turning the lights out. 
Hmm? Look, now, if you're still sore about me walking out on you three years ago, I can explain. I am definitely not interested. Much. You were pretty ambitious in those days, Linda. I still am. I knew exactly what you wanted, where you were going, how to get it. I sound like a subway. Stop creeping up on me. Hmm? Oh, uh, well, anyway, that day I left you after we had lunch together, well, I, I started looking in store windows. Suddenly I had a terrible realization. That you'd forgotten to borrow a taxi fare from me? No, no. No, I found myself looking at furniture. Household furniture, bedroom suites, two dollars down, one thousand five hundred sixty-seven weeks to pay. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I wanted to get married, and it, it bowled me over. I, I, I just stood there, paralyzed. And then what? I hopped the first plane for Germany. I just couldn't live the way you do, tied down, everything all planned out. But even when I was making love to you, I. I sort of had a feeling that you were wondering what time it was. That is not the sweetest thing anyone's ever said to me. Yes, I, I suppose you were terribly angry, and I'm sorry. Oh, I've got over it. Completely? There's one thing that's obviously never occurred to you, Carrie. I, I don't think I would have married you. Well, Linda, I'm amazed. You came back expecting to find a broken butterfly quivering in the void of your absence. Didn't you? Yes, yes, Linda. Yes, that's right. Yes. This uh, this isn't at all what I expected. Furthermore, it's it's uh, nicer this way. It's kind of like old times, isn't it? Just the two of us sitting here talking. We always did talk a lot. Yes. Mm-hmm. We talked away everything that ever meant anything to us. Mm, no, uh, not everything. Not uh, not yet. Not no, 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 Carrie. Not uh, everything. Carrie, now, yeah. Ouch! Ah, you're smooth and charming. You turn it on like hot water from a faucet. But I had measles once, and now I'm immune. I always know what time it is now, Carrie. It's 11.20. You have to be up early. Mm-hmm. Harry, you dear gullible boy, you just struck out. Linda, now, look, we know each other too well for all this. We still go for each other, and you know it. I only know that you're very casual about these things, and I'm not. I, I'd wake up one morning and find you were in Afghanistan. Linda. Linda. All right, all right, I'll go. Quietly and sadly into the night went fun-loving Carrie Jackson. The schmo of the week. Oh, oh I, I almost forgot the, uh, the job on your magazine. Do I get it? Yes. Goody, goody. On certain conditions, I'm editor. I'm running Home Life magazine now. Means you'll have to take orders from me. A pleasure, boss. And you'll have to forget I'm a woman. Hmm. Well, I'll try. Linda Gilman is not a woman. Linda Gilman is not a woman. Here, have a cigar. <laughs> hey, thanks. I'll smoke it after breakfast. See you at the office, Terry. <laughs> This is Ed inside, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Grab a chair and I'll get started. Oh, morning, Terry. Good morning, sir. You met everyone? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And they all want to know how I got mixed up in the business like that. Mm-hmm. What you tell them? Oh, it's just lucky, I guess. How nice. Now, now, as you know, our story concerns the Brinker family in Chester, Indiana. Two young girls, usual number of parents. Yeah, what's the old man do, Linda? Well, Mr. Brinker owns a hardware store. The house, incidentally, is a museum piece. So is Mrs. Brinker. Paula, you have to put her on a diet. Don't I always? Uh, just to satisfy my own curiosity, how did Home Life magazine happen to pick this particular family? Well, the eldest daughter's being married anyway, and she happens to fit into our schedule. She's willing to be married right away for us. Oh, Paula, you'll see that their clothes are brought up to date, use uh, light summary materials, and, and Rosemary, you'll make out the usual household budget and weekly menu and keep them simple and... Scotty, usual pictures. What about me? Well, this will be a, a 19-page feature, Carrie, about, um, oh, about 5,000 words. We'll call it June Bride. Hmm. Hey, isn't that a little daring? <laughs> now, all of you remember this is a typical small-town family, and that they have to live with the house, the clothes, and the neighbors after we've gone. I've had the local cop and a painter and a poster working in the house for the past two weeks. Uh, Mrs. Brinker expects us tomorrow. Uh, she's going to bake a cake. Oh, no. Hmm. 
Very well. Remember, it's winter and we have to do a June wedding in less than a week. Any questions? No. Uh, no. All right, fine. That's all for now. Oh, Carrie. Yeah? Uh, you and I are flying out this afternoon. We are? Four feet of snow in Crestville. Better wear your longies. I want to look here, Linda. Now, of all the corners... Tell me all about it on the plane. We're leaving at 110. Yes, sir. Well, at least I have a rough idea of what we'll do with the Brinker's house. Well, I wish I had a rough idea of what I was going to use for a story. Do have your story, 19-year-old girl, married boy next door. It's America's best. You're really getting folksy, aren't you? Next thing you know... You'll be crocheting and putting up pickled cucumber pits. Now, listen, you, you stop sneering in that superior way of yours at all the important things in life. Who's sneering? Oh. Now, let's see. There are two children in the family, huh? Jean, age 19. Boo, age 17. Boo? He's short for Barbara. Jean couldn't pronounce Barbara when they were babies. Called her boo Bar, and it stuck. Uh-huh. Well, what are these Harveys like? Well, Jean's very pretty. Very well, 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 why didn't you say so? Mm, wipe off your chin, dear. The groom plays football. Mm, oh. You can work it into the story. Oh, what story? The only way I'll get a story is to have typical Mr. Brinker beat typical Mrs. Brinker to death with a typical meat axe. Be reasonable, Linda. I've got to find a gimmick. You've got your gimmick. A June bride. Hmm. Maybe there's insanity in the family. You know, an uncle or something. Now, listen, Carrie. I'm very serious about this. I won't stand for any hoax. You're going to write a straight young love story, no twists, no angles, and no drama. I am. And you're going to be nice to the Brinkers. No little jokes at their expense. Hmm. Carrie, please be... be charming. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, here's the house. Oh, oh, Carrie, one thing you have to learn about Indiana people... They don't talk a great deal unless it's important. Well, I know why. They're afraid if they open their mouths, they'll freeze their teeth. I've never been so cold in my life. Quiet. <laughs> Be quiet. Someone's coming. You know, I hope it's a St. Bernard. Yes? Well, it is a St. Bernard. <laughs> well, my dear Mrs. Brinker, I, I would have known you anyway. It was very nice to see you. And how, how are the children, Mrs. Brinker? <laughs> Him. But did I, wasn't I charming enough? Oh, oh, yes, dear. There was only one little thing the matter. That wasn't Mrs. Brinker. Oh. Hello. Miss Cuban. I'll be right down. Don't give anything. Who was that? that? Sounds like food. Come on, we'll wait in the living room. Ah! Now what? This is the living room. <laughs> it's a purple horror, all right, so we'll do something with it. Yeah, we set fire to it in several places. <laughs> I won't be half bad and we get rid of some of the knickknacks and cut away the scroll work. You mean to tell me you can do something with this funeral parlor? You'd be surprised. Why the sardonic first? No, I, I wasn't smirking. I, I'm, I'm just looking at you with new respect. Why? Did I know my business? <laughs> Frankly, I, I thought you'd be out of place in Indiana. Now I can even imagine you churning a tub of butter. How am I doing? Well, your hair's in your eyes, but you look wonderful. Linda. Linda, I... The I, dining I, room is in here. See that, uh, see that plate rack on the wall? You like dream how, how can you talk about plate racks when I'm feeling so affectionate? You must be falling out. <laughs> <laughs> now, Linda. Now, we're going to be here for a whole week, and I, I, uh, I have what I think is a wonderful idea, and it starts out like this. I have a better idea. Go to the hotel and take a nice cold shower. Oh, I give up. Oh, no, don't give up. It's very interesting. Nobody makes love like that in Indiana. Or anywhere else. Hello, Boo, dear. How nice to see you again. Yes. This is Harry Jackson. I'll feature you right up. Don't go too near him, Boo. He wants to do jitsu. Mother and Jean will be right down. We didn't expect you so soon. Who is that St. Bernard? That, uh, that lady who let us in. Oh, it must have been Mrs. Lace from next door. She's helping us with the curtain. Daddy, they're here. They are? Well, hello, folks. This is Mr. Jackson's father. He's awfully nice for an older man. Hmm, yeah, just call me Gramps. <laughs> well, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Jackson, I'm sure. 
Well, here's Mrs. Brinker now. Hello, Miss Gilman. Hmm? Hello, Mrs. Brinker, and hello, Jean. I, I'd like you both to meet our feature writer, Carrie Jackson. Carrie, Mrs. Brinker, and Jean. Oh, Mrs. Brinker, it's so nice to see you. I know you anywhere. I've heard so much about you. <laughs> and this, of course, is Jean. Hello. Yes, you certainly are. Oh, I think it's all terribly exciting. All you people coming all the way to Indiana just for my little old wedding. Why, we wouldn't miss your little old wedding for a little old million dollars. And I wish you'd tell us more about how you go about this kind of a story. Uh, You told me a lot the last time, Miss Gilman, but since then, the relatives... Well, uh, well, I I was wondering if we really should go through with it. Oh, but Mrs. Drinker, you'll be famous, absolutely famous. Now, let's go upstairs and have a chat, shall we? I, I'd like to wash up. Oh, we're all invited out for supper, Miss Gilman. And some of the neighbors are giving a barn dance and sleigh ride. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Well, I guess this is sort of an occasion. Uh, <clears throat> are you, uh, you a temperance man, Mr. Jackson? Am I a temperance? Mm. Uh, are you by any chance asking me if I'll have a drink? I'll go get it. I have to keep it hid like I saw in the movies once. Uh, Mrs. Brinker's temperance. Oh. Oh, uh, oh it's all right, Bo. Come in. Oh, oh, I didn't think you saw me. No, I'm glad I did. I want to talk to you. Oh, what about? Well, you. You're, you're a very attractive young lady. You shouldn't let Jane push you out of sight the way she does. Just smart. <laughs> oh, well, who am I to oppose the opinion of thousands? <laughs> Those are pictures on the mantelpiece of the family. Most of them. Uh-huh. Tell me, how are all your uncles? Oh, fine. All except Uncle Harry. And we don't talk about him. Oh? Mm-mm. Oh. A little soft on the head, maybe? Oh, no. He's a Democrat. Oh, I see. Uh, who's, the, uh, who's the boy on the photograph with you? Oh, that's Bud. The happy bridegroom, huh? Nice guy. Wonderful. Uh-huh. I gather Boo likes Bud. Uh-huh. Does he know? It wouldn't make any difference. Oh, now you mustn't underestimate yourself. No, I just haven't got sock. What is sock? Bounce. Bounce. Oh, 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 yes. yes. Bounce. <clears throat> I see. Well, I just haven't got any. And Jean has. <laughs> he used to make Jim awfully mad. Jim? He's my brother. Well, why should he care? My goodness, he and Jean were engaged once. They were. And Bud's brother and Jean, well, what happened? Well, Jim stayed in the Army after the war. He was stationed in Chicago. Well, he doesn't get home very often, and, well, I don't know, I guess Jean just likes attention. I see. So Jean took up with Bud, leaving Jim out in the cold, and you, too. And the wedding's only a few days off, and you'll all live unhappily ever after. Boy, what an angle. Angle? What would happen if Jim came home before the wedding? Oh, probably cause an awful lot of trouble. It would? But I'd like it. You'd like it, and I'd have something to write about. Let me see. I could tell the public relations officer in Chicago to use the hallowed name of Home Life Magazine, get Jim ordered back here. Now, who's the public relations officer in Chicago? Lynn. Lynn, I said, Major Howard Lynn. He'd do it all right, too. Oh, that's wonderful. Let's call him right now, Mr. Jackson. No, no, forget it. But why? Uh, That determined young lady upstairs would serve my head on a platter with an apple in my mouth. Probably would cause an awful lot of trouble. But... Mr. Jackson, Papa and I are going to make some beautiful music. Uh, You better chew a cold for an encore. Uh, You better go upstairs. I will. But first, I've got a phone call to make. Operator. I want to make a long-distance call. I want to speak to Major Howard Zinn at the Army Base in Chicago. One moment, please. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This your producer, Mr. William Keeling. Act two of June Bride, starring James Stewart as Carrie Jackson and Betty Davis as Linda Gilman. Well, it's a few minutes later. 
Miss Boo Brinker has completed her phone call to Chicago, and there at an army base... You heard me, Mitchell. Those are orders. You mean I have to go, Major Lynn? Are you kidding? A week's furlough? Home? Well, you don't understand, sir. My brother's getting married. Well? Well, he's marrying my best girl. At least she was. Oh. Well, never mind. Home Life magazine wants you there. Report to a guy at the Brinker house named Jackson. Yes, sir. And in the Brinker house, only Boo knows that Jim is on his way home. Upstairs, Linda Gilman is chatting with the bride-to-be. While down in the pantry, Carrie Jackson is about to inexperience an unexpected sample of Indiana hospitality. You've got to keep this jug hit outside, Mr. Jackson. Mrs. Brink is very temperance. Keeps putting the cough back in. Oh, I see, I see. I gather that makes a difference, Mr. Brinker. Well, it don't ferment if you keep the cough in. Uh-huh. What is it? Cider. Apple cider. <laughs> yeah, you devil. <laughs> well, here you are, Mr. Jackson. Hi. Yeah, I don't suppose as a cat fan, Tom, that we'd go down and have something really to... <laughs> Holy smokes, a cider? Well, I, I guess it's, uh, it's a little strong. Uh, that, uh, that freezing don't leave much but pure alcohol. Don't light any matches, shall we? <laughs> Apple, just, uh, uh, those are just the plain apples, no? Well, they're, uh, they're pippins. <coughs> I see. You know, I, I've, <coughs> I've, uh, I've bitten into many an apple, Mr. Franken, but this is the first time I've ever had one bite back at me. Well, how about another little snort, eh? What oh, do you say? Uh, how, how could I refuse? The, uh, just apples, uh, just plain little old apples. I help you unpack or something, Miss Gilman? Oh, no, thank you very much. Uh, tell me something, Jean. Are you happy? Oh, I guess I am. One thing's certain, I'm not going to be lonely anymore. Lonely? Oh, I was last summer. Nobody left in town. I'll say I was lonely. Then Bud came along. And I grabbed him. Now I'll ask you a question. Why aren't you married? <laughs> Mostly because I wasn't asked. Why did you ask him? Boo! Oh, now, really? Yes, Boo, now, really? You were listening in the hall again. Oh, it's the only way I ever get to hear anything. <laughs> well, I think I'll change. Did you press my red dress? I put it on your bed. Was it Mr. Jackson? The man you didn't ask? Who is interviewing who around here? Excited about the wedding, Boo? I think it stinks. You do? Why? I don't think I'll tell you. You're being very cryptic, Boo. Don't you like me? Oh, yes, very much. Do what I want to be, Miss Gilman. You're so... You're so sure of yourself. I am. Mm, and you're chick to death. As for me, well, I send away for the patterns and make the dresses exactly the way they say. But something just happens when I get through. Not chick. I guess it's just me. <laughs> Well, Carrie and your father seem to be getting along famously. Miss Gilman, if you really wanted a man, what would you do? I think I'd grab him. <laughs> I wonder what's going on down there. Oh, I bet Pop throws it again. Hmm? No, nothing. And thanks for a very interesting conversation. Well, I didn't understand it all, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> Your eyes are actually opening, Carrie. Hmm? Oh. Oh, I've been thrown away. <laughs> Feeling better? Oh, where am I? What, what's, what's all this? We're in a sleigh on our way home from a barn dance. A barn dance? A... Have I been to a barn dance? That you have. That you have. He he had a jug. I've Mr. Franker had a jug, and he claimed he made the stuff out of apples, just little green type apples. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And time stood still. I don't remember a thing. <laughs> That's more I don't want to. Who, what, what, who are the giddy, the giddy juveniles? Oh, they're, they're going home from the barn dance, too, where, where they're chaperones. And here's where they all get off. Three more, three, four off. Oh, 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 if you want to get up, Carrie, I'll just have to blow you a kiss. Huh? And don't forget Friday. You promised, Carrie. Uh, I, I did? Uh, uh, oh, sure. All right. Yes. Uh, who's that? Sally. Good night, mm-hmm. honey. Uh, good night, uh, honey. Uh, yeah. I must have had a wonderful time tonight. I... <laughs> Yes, you did. Wonderful. Just what kind of a wonderful time did I have? A wonderful. One by one, you promised every girl in Crestville High to help her with her homework. Oh, no. It uh, seems you're an expert on multiplication. And then? And then you went to sleep. Not a moment too soon. You look very nice when you're asleep, Carrie. Very young and, and very innocent. Astonishing. You know... You know, you're mellowing. I, uh... I think I'll help you with your homework right now. No, 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 Carrie, no. Apparently, no, apparently Carrie. you've never walked home from a sleigh ride. Well, I advise against you. You know, the woods, it's bitter cold, and the woods are teeming with wolves. Oh, well, that, that, that settles it. Then I, I'm much too young to die, and besides, you're very comfortable. Sort of like an old shoe. Gee, your cheek's cold. Getting warm about a second. You know, you know, I'm beginning to like Crestville. All of a sudden, I, I kind of think I could settle down to. I get a job in New York, stay put. I could even grow roses on Sunday if that's what you want. Could you really? No. But for me, uh, I guess I'd look pretty silly following you all over Europe, carrying your suitcases. Uh, a respectable two paces behind, speaking only when spoken to. We have what I believe is referred to as a problem, don't we? Oh, Carrie, let's not make it a problem. Let's not even talk about it. Why not? Oh, you'd be heading for Berlin again, and and I'd miss you so. Oh, Linda. Linda Gilman is not a woman. <laughs> Good morning. How do you feel? Wonderful. Hey, you're just in time. How do you spell idyllic? Do you want me to measure the curtains now? Mm, not, not now, Mrs. Lace. Why don't you do the living room first? Already did. We're uh, making new drapes. That's nice. Mm, how's the story going? Uh, it isn't. There are too many characters, I think. Uh, uh, Mrs. Lace, are you sure you've got the right measurements for the living room curtains? All right. I'll measure them again. Mind if I read over your shoulder? You can just call me when you're through with smoothing. Mm. You should read over my shoulder more often. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what was that? Mrs. Brinker, Paul is trying to massage ten pounds off of a... Paul has muscles like a stevedore. Well, when did Paul get here? Oh, stop arrived a while ago. I didn't let them disturb you. Hey, Linda, where are you? I thought I was supposed to take some pictures. Be with you in a minute, Scott. I'm supposed to teach Mrs. Brinker how to make a cheese souffle and other goodies, right? Yeah. Hi, Carrie. Hi. You seen that stove in there? That's not a stove. It's a locomotive boiler. <laughs> you don't need a cook, Linda. You need Casey Jones. <laughs> well, do the best you can. And when you're finished in the kitchen, I want you to help me cut the living room sofa in half. Look, uh, how about sending Jean down here? I need some vital statistics, you know? Mm, I know. But Paula will do all the necessary measuring. Okay, I'm no good. I kill myself. Satisfied? Jean's taking a bath. Taking a bath? Well, why don't I just go right up? (laughs) (laughs) Carrie, see who's at the door, will you? I'll send the bride down when she's through. Well, uh, who are you? Who are you? Hmm? I asked first. <laughs> I'm Lieutenant Mitchell. I've got orders to report here to Mr. Jackson. Uh, what'd you say your name was? Yeah. Jim Mitchell. I'm supposed Sorry. to... Oh. Uh, uh, nobody is home. We're, we're, uh, everybody's gone. Uh, Boo? Boo, where are you? Boo? Boo's helping with the wallpaper. Who is at the door? Hey, uh, go away now. Go, uh, smallpox, a uh, bubonic... Pl- everybody's dead in here. <laughs> 
never going to get any place. You've simply got to stop listening. Paul has been really working her over. Well, what's she doing with a hacksaw? Or... Who's that at the door? Uh, oh, it's a pe- uh, peddler. I told him we didn't want any. But... Peddler? That's an army officer. What's he selling? A surplus airplane. <laughs> Jerry Jackson, you open that door. Okay. Well, who are you? I'm Jim Mitchell. I've got orders to report to a Mr. Jackson of Home Life Magazine. This is Mr. Jackson. Well, how are you? How do you do? How do you do? I know you must be Bud's brother. How do you do? I'm Lindsay Gilman. This is wonderful. It is? The wedding would not be complete without you, Lieutenant. Uh, Linda, I, I think maybe there's something you ought to know about this. Your family in the Briggs make such a Ms. delight. Mr. Gilman, excuse me for interrupting, but I've been deliberately trying to avoid this. It's about him and Jean. Well, what about them? And, uh, Jean. Well, hello. Hello. What are you doing here? I'm home. You are? Yeah. I thought you were still in Chicago. No. No, I'm home. They, they, uh, these uh, these two young people were engaged at one time. Uh, Harry. You see, I, it seemed like a very good idea at the time, but I, then I dropped it, definitely. I thought that... I, I might have known you'd do something like this. If we're going to do something about that soap, I'll need a saw. Do you see a saw uh, around I here? I hope you'll be very happy, Jean. I am already. I'm delighted to see that you're both intelligent young people. Oh, you needn't worry, Miss Gilman. I'm going to be very happy with Bud. He appreciates me. He wouldn't go off and leave now, me. Now, look, I've told you a thousand times. And I... if you think I'm going to wait until I'm practically an old maid to get married, you're very much mistaken. Ah, uh, that's kind of nasty talk we like to hear. Listen, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, this is pretty rough. If you don't mind, I'd like to stay away until after the wedding's over. Anything you say, old man. Go on, Miss Gilman. Go on, Jean. Ah, ah, for a moment there, I thought we were in trouble. I mean, about the story, I mean. Oh, no harm done. What's the matter with her? Nothing, nothing. She's just so happy. Jim! Jim, wait for me! No harm done. The whole June issue of Home Life magazine has just gone out that door. Now, wait a minute before you flip your lid. Now, there's another angle to this. Angle, angle. That's all you think about. I have five million readers waiting for the wedding of Jean and Bud. And suddenly all I have left is an angle. What are you going to do? Try and persuade those two to be sensible, and I'd better succeed, if you know what I mean. Well, I've got the dining room chandelier down, Linda. What'll I do with it? Oh, later, Scott, and later. Why haven't we heard from Gary? He's probably dead. Why don't you turn your motor off for a while, Madam Editor? It's been going like this for three days now. Ever since the kids walked out and disappeared. I should never have spent care. I should have kept on looking for him myself. In less than 24 hours, a wedding's supposed to take place in this house, in this room. Well, what are we going to tell Mama? She's not suspicious. Oh, no, no. She still thinks that Jean went to visit her aunt in Fort Wayne. But when Jean doesn't show up for the wedding... Exclaim, exclaim. Um... Anything wrong, Mrs. Brinker? Uh, I just wanted to ask if I could please have a cup of tea. Oh, now, now, Mrs. Brinker. We've spent all week drying you out. You must be so proud of you. Oh, Whitman says he doesn't care if I'm cheap or not, just as long as I've stopped screaming. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I'll just sit down and... Oh, oh, hold it, Mrs. Brinker. I better get some of the pins out of that dress first. Oh, my, all that sawing and pounding. They didn't really cut off the front porch, did they? No, no, it's not... Bad as that, we just took off some of the scroll work. Oh, I'm glad that's the only Linda. thing I wouldn't want. Linda, there's somebody here to see you. It's the back door. See who it is, will you, Paula? I think you'd better come, Linda. Mr. Jackson. He's come back. Care. I'd better close the door, Linda. Well, I found her, all right. Jean, Jim Mitchell. Where are they? Indianapolis. What are they doing there? Well, the last time I saw them, they were necking. Oh, don't be funny, Terry. <laughs> Why didn't you stay with them? Oh, I felt a little out of place on the honeymoon. <laughs> See, they're married. Married? Well, does it? All right, Carrie, you better go inside and tell Mrs. Brinker. Well, you're not going through with the story? Well, there's no story now. Obviously, we'll leave tomorrow afternoon, do a quickie in New York. 
I can't leave this house in a mess. Oh, wait a minute. Before you give up. Now, I started this thing for a particular reason. I am trying to be very patient with you, Carrie. Now, don't you think you're just taking this thing a little too seriously? Seriously? I'm two days away from my deadline. We've already played it up over six pages of pictures, a thousand words of copy, and here I am without a story. You've got the best story of your life, a real story about human beings that isn't finished yet. But if you're girding up your loins to fire me, go ahead, get it over with. That's your usual reaction to a crisis, isn't it? Simply walk away and let someone else clean up the mess you've made. I'm just trying to get out from underneath of this labor versus management relationship of ours. I, every time I get affectionate with you, I feel as though I'm snuggling up to the path hardly, Bill. <laughs> Well, you needn't be troubled by it any longer. You are fired. Okay, now, what about us? Everything is finished here, Carrie, including us. Very easy for you, isn't it? A little soft music, a kiss or two, a wave of the hand, exit Carrie Jackson. Well, I feel so sorry for you, and you're so sweet and so patient and so utterly dependable. And here I am being cruel to you on a flimsy pretext. You've just ruined everything we've done here. Oh, don't give me that. You're not firing me because Jean Brinker ran off with a man that she should have married in the first place. It's because you're madly in love with me, and to you, that's a sign of weakness. You are incredible. Utterly incredible. Perched up on that pinnacle of masculine ego, looking down at poor, weak, defenseless females and pitying them because they don't have beards. If you had a beard, I wouldn't look at you twice. Oh, very amusing, very amusing, and a, and a typical male reaction to intellectual defeat. Me? Intellectually defeated? Now, of course, I run that attitude before every woman does the minute she starts to make a career for herself. Get back to the kitchen, Mother. It's a man's world. All I want to do is to find out where I stand with you, and all of a sudden my, I'm knee-deep in the battle of the sexes. What is this? <laughs> Carrie, right from the beginning, you have refused to follow instructions because I am a woman and not to be taken seriously. This whole trip has been one big hilarious joke to you. Laughing gaily all the while, you've deliberately ruined the story we set out to do. You've got a darn good story right here, only you're so mad you can't see it. Maybe I have been a little flippant, but that's the way I am. I can't go around bleeding from every pore just because things don't go right. Well, it's always Berlin, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I only took this job because, poor, deluded dope that I am, I meant a great deal to me to be near you again. You have changed. Whatever else was wrong with you, you used to be honest. I came back looking for you. All right, the next time, you look for me. And one more thing. What? Give me back my cigar. <laughs> The curtain rises on the third act of June Bride, starring Betty Davis as Linda Gilman and James Stewart as Carrie Jackson. <laughs> Linda Gilman's June Bride has turned into a January Bride, thanks, uh, she believes, to Carrie Jackson. And her own romance with the ex-foreign correspondent is as cold as the Indiana countryside. In this moment of despair, Carrie has a visitor, the little fixer-upper, Boo Brinker. Do me a favor, Boo. Don't ever be a woman. You're still mad at me, aren't you? And Linda still thinks it was you who brought Jim Mitchell back. Well, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about me. Oh, I'm not worried about you. It's what I've done to Brett. Coming over. You told him about Jane? What'd he say? He said, huh. Oh, I think was well, evidently... Wasn't much of a blow to him, then. Oh, it, it was. I can tell from the way he said it. Oh, you're really in love with Bud, aren't you? Oh, but he doesn't like me. What, what makes you so sure? Oh, I can tell. Ah. The way he breathes. The way he breathes. Uh, I, don't, I don't get it, but... Well, when he's around you, he always breathes like this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But, but when he's around me... He doesn't breathe at all. Well, do you know why? Because he doesn't really think of you as an attractive woman. Why not? Well, I haven't the faintest idea. Oh. Now, if we could only make Bud jealous, if we could make him think that somebody, me, for instance, was madly in love with you. If only... Look. 
Look, go upstairs and tell Paula to give you that honeymoon dress that Jean was going to wear. Put it on. Oh, I can't. Bud's coming over. That's just the point. Now hurry. I'll keep him occupied so you're ready to come down. Where is she? Where's Boo? What she want? Sit down, Bud. Here, have a chair. Have half a sofa. Uh, Bud... The minute I saw you, I said to myself, I said, uh, now there's a man of the world. You did? Uh, yes. Yes. Naturally, when all this happened with Jean, why, I knew that you'd take it well. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, Mr. Jackson. Mm-hmm. I, I'm glad we had this chance to get together and talk, old man. I, I wanted to ask your advice on something. Yeah? It's, uh, it's about Boo. Who? Boo. Boo. Do you, do you think that Boo could be interested in a man like me? Huh? I refer to marriage, of course. Boo? Boo. See, since I've been here, I've, I've become very fond of him. Boo? I must say I admire your ability to carry on a conversation with a very few simple little words. Well, a, a lot's happened to me today, Mr. Jackson. I just can't seem to catch up. Let me get this straight. You want to marry Boo? If she'll have me. What you too old for her? She's just a kid. Mm-hmm. Ah, Boo's blossoming. She's, uh, she's becoming a very attractive woman. I don't know whether you've noticed. Oh, that isn't the point. You, you just don't think of Boo as anybody's wife. I do. I, I can see her in a wedding dress right now. As a matter of fact, I can... Oh, oh, Boo! Well, well, how nice you look. Thank you. Yeah, swell. I can't tell you how sorry I am, Bud. About Jean. Oh, forget it. You have such a noble character. Uh, he works, Mr. Johnson. You're the only man I know that treats me like a woman. Now, that's because I know that you have the makings of a first-class wife. Hey, now, wait a minute. What's on your mind, bud? You take your hands off her. She's not your kind of girl. Oh, what kind of girl is she? I've watched Boo ever since she could walk. She doesn't need you. Now, well, there's still a free country, you know. Still a free country. How about a little kiss, baby? What? Ah, what a woman. I'll be seeing you, bud. What's been going on with you and him, anyhow? Does your father know that a man that's practically old enough to be your mother is making passes at you? Mr. Jackson's awful nice. And he says the most exciting thing. Now, you listen to me, Boo Brinker. I don't like what's been going around and around, and, and I don't like... What's the matter? It's you. You look different. I do? I mean, do I? Yeah, I love a little bit of though you kind of... Yeah, you sure do. Huh? You're blossoming. You're becoming a very attractive girl. I am? Mm. W- were you going to say something else? No. Oh. Hey, uh, how come you're leaning on me? Your back tired? I beg your pardon. Beg my pardon? Ooh, um, do you like me as much as Mr. Jackson? Mm, more. Huh? I guess I always have. You're so strong. I love strong men. They're so mm, strong. <clears throat> Boo, uh, I-, I know I'm not much, but we've always gotten along so well together and everything. Yes? Well, w- w- what, what, what I want to ask you is, is to marry. Marry you? Yeah, n- now, right away. Only after what's happened, after Jean and all... Uh, I don't blame you for saying no. Well, who said no? You mean you... Oh, swell. Swell. Oh. Oh, but what goes on? Well, we... Well, we're going to get married. Yeah, and right away, if other people can get, get married, so can other people. Married? Married you are. You won't change your mind. Stay right here. Don't go away. For heaven's sake, don't move. Paula Scott Rosemont. 
Rosemary, come here quickly. Yeah? Scott, unpack everything, set up your cameras. Paul and Rosemary, go to help me tell Mrs. Brinker. What happened? The wedding is going to take place right on schedule, except that the bride is boo. And who's the lucky man? Not that it matters. Behold the bridegroom coming. Him? <laughs> May I come in? Now, if you're concerned with the fact that I'm still in the house here, I... Oh, no, no, don't, don't be silly. We're going through with our plans. It's going to be a wedding after all. Bud is going to marry Boo. Boo? Boo. Boo? I thought you'd be surprised. I'm astounded. I'm astounded. Yeah, so we can go back to work then. Well, you, you fired me. I'm unfiring you. Why? Oh, for heaven's sake, Carrie. We have a wedding to run off and not very much time to do it in. I, well, I just can't get another writer at this late date. Here, this for you, the story. Oh, but Carrie, none of this is any good now. We we have to get completely new material. How um how, how Bud and Boo grew up together. How they discovered each other only because we came into their lives. That's the lead. Sound all right? Yeah, very good. Get started on it right away. It'll be here when you want it. Oh, my little Boo getting married. I'm so nervous. Now, now, before you go downstairs, Mrs. Brinker, I want you to be sure you know just what to do. We're going to take pictures all during the ceremony, but don't let that bother you. Just be natural. Are you sure I look all right? Boo, you look lovely. <laughs> the wedding march. You're cute to go down, Mrs. Brinker. Oh, don't cry, Mama. I'm just getting married. Boo, after the ceremony, remember that you and Bud are in the reception line. Oh, we'll be there. And just be sure to speak all the names loudly and clearly so that... Mr. Jackson can take them down for the picture caption. Mr. Jackson? But he isn't here. What do you mean? I guess you've been too busy to notice. He left last night. Left? He even called me from New York this morning to wish me good luck. Who didn't know? No. Well, uh, well, this is hardly your problem, Boo. Good luck to you. Take her downstairs, Mr. Brinkley. Hold it, Madam Editor. I want a picture of you. Oh, Pooh, get downstairs, stop where you belong. Well, what's the matter with you? Carrie's lamp walked out without finishing the story. Where did he go? New York. Let's face it, we haven't any story. But he left the copy. I have it right here. Let's see. Oh, stuff on G. But I just read it. It's all about Boo. About Boo? Let me see. Then he knew all the time before I did. This is the whole story. I don't get it. Oh, it's very simple. Terribly simple. I've been an absolute idiot. Well, if you're looking for an argument, you'd better pick another subject. <laughs> well, we don't want to miss Boo's wedding. Why, Linda, you're crying. I'm not crying. It's not dignified. Oh, by all means, keep your dignity, Madam Editor. Personally, on these cold, wintry nights, I like a nice, warm back to put my feet on. Shall we go down? Yes. <laughs> Well, Linda, I guess this finishes it, hmm? The June issue, all ready to go to press. Any idea what we'll do for July? Mm, something rare, rich and novel, probably with firecrackers in it. Same right, huh? Oh, by the way, he called my office this afternoon. What, uh, what was he calling about? His check. Oh. Well, I'll be inside with the boss. Come in. What is that untidy object you're clutching? Our uh, June issue calls and dummy copy. I need your okay before it goes to the printer. Sit down. Carlton, you, um, you have three months in which to find a new editor for home life. Resigning you? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, if you had a better offer, I'm sure. No, that... no, it's just that I... Well, I'm tired of being a brick wall covered with roses. Now on it, lavender and old lace for Linda Gilman. With slippers and a pipe for Carrie Jackson? Mm. If I can find it. I take it he's not aware of the, uh, the uh, bliss in store for him. No. You see me? Mm-hmm. He's been in. Constantly. Personally, I think he's just been waiting for you to come back. Oh, yes, I can imagine. Well, why don't you ask him? Go on, open that door. Are you trying to tell me that... Then he... I'll open the door. All right. Carrie. Yeah? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Carrie. I was all wrong about you. You always have been. I, I only have two more issues to get out out the... Uh... I'll be free after that. Ah, uh, you need a rest. I, I was thinking maybe next month we do the story of, of Jean and Jim, the newlyweds in Chicago. Have a good time. No, no, I meant all of us. No. No, not me. 
Well, I'm doing something else. I'm leaving. As a matter of fact, I just dropped in now to say goodbye to Carl and see my suitcase. Yeah. It's a beautiful wedding, dear. Everyone was very happy. Except me. I cried. I cried for a long time. I haven't done that in years. Hey, Peter. <laughs> oh, Carrie, don't, don't make jokes. Don't shut me out. Well, what do you expect? You, you had me on a merry-go-round all week. Go away, Carrie. Come back, Carrie. I never knew whether you were going to kiss me or kick me. Well, do you want me to tell you? No, no, don't get provocative. And stop turning off the lights. We've been through all that. Oh, Carrie, you know very well we're perfectly made it. After all, we're of opposite sexes. And Rose is on Sunday versus carrying these suitcases all over Europe. It's become a very simple, old-fashioned question of who wears the pants. I'd look pretty silly without them. Carrie, Carrie, wait. Well? You, uh, you forgot your suitcases. Uh... I'll carry them. Where to? Berlin? Uh-huh. Afghanistan? Uh-huh. Baluchistan? Uh-huh. Madagascar? Uh-huh. Anywhere. Say. Before our stars return to their curtain calls, I'd like to make a suggestion to the ladies. Wonderful opening night in the Lux Radio Theater. And here are the two stars who made it so. Betty Davis and James Stewart. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I think it's rather fitting that June Bride should mark the first public appearance of the famous August Bridegroom, Jimmy Stewart. Yes, you have our congratulations and very best wishes, Jimmy. And naturally, this makes an important change in your status with the Lux Radio Theater. Yes, I, I've been looking forward to that, Phil. It's, it's uh, very fine, a really wonderful tradition you have. What is all this? Uh, well, uh, now that I'm a married man, I, uh, I get Lux flights to take home. <laughs> Sending some along for your home, too. <laughs> Incidentally, I've heard some wonderful reports at Warner Brothers about your new picture, Beyond the Forest. Thank you. And now I suppose you're planning a vacation. Not a picture as soon as I find a script. In the meantime, I'm indulging in the beach at Laguna. Well, if you notice a hollow in the sand, that's where I've been lying all summer. Well, I hope you spent some time getting shows lined up for the fall, Bill. Yes, some attractions I know our audience will like. There's one next week. It's Paramount's exciting hit, Saigon. And starring in it, we'll have John Lung and Elizabeth Scott. This is a rapid-fire drama of adventure in the Far East. A full order of thrills and chills for next Monday night. I know you'll have a wonderful season in the Lux Radio Theatre, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thank you for People <laughs> Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Lake... Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents John Lund and Elizabeth Scott in Saigon. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett and our music was directed.